If you like making your own assets in Blender, I'm sure you're tired in Unreal Engine when they look like this, this, or even worse, this. Luckily today, I'm gonna to show you five things that I do with my meshes in order to import them into Unreal Engine 5 and make them look super awesome. These five things are simple, but will ensure that you always have a mesh that looks exactly like it does in Blender in Unreal Engine 5. Welcome to the channel. If you are new, my name is Taken Grace and I make Unreal Engine tutorials and videos just like this. So if you wanna join a community and become a better game dev with us, consider subscribing to the channel. All right, why don't you join me in Blender and I will show you guys the five super cool things. All right, so we're inside Blender 4.4. Uh, I've already made a mesh here, um, which is just a basic lamp. So uh, I'm just gonna show you guys five really cool things um, to uh, get going here in uh, Blender to make uh, everything in Unreal 5 that you import uh, look really good. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is, um, I've literally just created this mesh and that's it. Uh, obviously, while you're creating the mesh here, uh, we wanna make sure like the topology is good. Um, we don't want anything um, that's gross looking. Uh, I'm not a topology expert by any means, but uh, for now, like uh, making sure that there's squares everywhere and not like random five-sided shapes or anything like that. Uh, this is a pretty easy thing to model, so uh, nothing crazy here. Uh, the next thing, uh, we wanna make sure our normals are oriented correctly. So I went into the um, viewport overlays here and then I'm gonna click face orientation, okay? Uh, nothing changed, which is actually a good sign, okay? If you saw something that looked like this, uh, had red, coloring on the face that means that that is the back side of this uh, face is normal okay so the normal is a basically the vector direction that is the visible side of a face okay uh, and this is telling unreal engine what side of the face it needs to render what side is going to be seen by the player okay so obviously all this is going to be seen but if you were to import this right now with this normal like this uh, it would not render this face. That's obviously not what we want. We want all of this on the outside to be visible because we're not gonna be putting our player inside this lamp. Uh, the opposite would be true if you're making like a, sky, like a sky sphere or something like that with stars and all that kind of stuff. You're gonna wanna invert the normals uh, so that uh, the inside is the side that gets rendered. Okay, so anyways, you see us, uh, you just can click on it and push Alt N. That'll bring up the normals menu and we can either flip it back to normal um, or if you have a bunch of uh, random ones that are flipped through, uh, whoops, pardon me, I did something that I should have done there. Anyways, yeah, so if like you have a bunch that's flipped uh, not the right way, you can highlight the whole thing, hit Alt N, and you can recalculate outside. Okay, and that will recalculate all of the faces. Uh, okay, so that's the normals. The other way you can do it here is uh, this, these four little squares here, you can click on that and you can do uh, like a vector kind of line here under normals. So now you can see where all of the faces are actually pointing. All right, so that's normals. Um, yeah, just make sure you pay attention to that, especially once you get into more complex meshes um, and you're doing a lot of editing to the geometry, like all of these vertices are getting moved around quite heavily. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you guys is slots, uh, material slots specifically. So um, if we go to the material tab, okay, here we have our mesh. We want our mesh to be uh, obviously like a metal color, but we wanna have some different colors on there too. So. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna hit this plus material slot, okay? And we're gonna create a new material. All right, we'll name this uh, met uh, metal, okay? And um, let's uh, just get the preview. Is it the preview or the preview surface? Surface, there we go. Surface, uh, the base color, we'll just make it a bit grayer, I guess. Uh, and then the metallics, we're gonna turn up to like seven point. Uh, 0 0.7 something something and then turn the roughness down okay so you can see that nothing's happened because we're on uh, solid view we want to be on the material uh preview mode okay so once we do that all right so then once we do that you can see that it's it's applied that material to our mesh okay but uh, there might be some things that we want to have a different material to it okay so uh for example this top bit here maybe we want this to be like a you know our little bronzy color here so uh we're gonna hit the plus sign again we're gonna add a separate material We'll go new and we'll do bronze. Okay, let's make that a uh, yellowish and but a bit darker, maybe even a bit orange or something like that, like a copper almost. Okay, uh, metallic, same thing. We'll turn that way up, turn the roughness down. Uh, okay, so you can see nothing changed because we need to assign faces to that material slot. So uh, in edit mode, you're gonna just select um, whatever the faces that you want. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna hit control plus just to get the bottom ones there as well. And then, hey, maybe we want these ones also to be. Okay, so we got those selected. We're gonna select bronze as the material slot now, and we're gonna hit assign. Okay, we've assigned that slot now, and you can see that the color has now changed for that particular face or these faces that we've selected. Okay, 
Um, I'm gonna do one more uh, material slot, and we're gonna call this the uh, light. Okay. Let's uh, base color. Let's make that. Uh, actually, let's leave it as it is, and uh, we're gonna go down to a mission. A mission is going to give off a color uh, light based on what uh, we're telling it to do here. So um, we are gonna uh, maybe do like a lighter yellow, like a like a this color maybe, and the strength will be you know. We'll have to plug it in here and see what we get here. We'll start with one, okay? All right, so let's select these faces now. And we are going to assign the light material to this. Okay, so now you can see that it's given off some light. Okay, so that's how you do material uh, slots and that's how you set these up inside of uh, Blender. And then in Unreal, I'll show you guys once we go in there, the um, static meshes you actually have these um, separate slots and you can set materials in Unreal Engine. It doesn't have to necessarily be these materials. Um, so if you're having trouble with material nodes or anything like that in here, you can put this mesh into Unreal Engine and then you can use like the default uh, metal uh, materials inside of Unreal Engine instead of these ones. So that's really handy. Okay, so the uh, next tip I'm gonna show you guys is we need to UV unwrap our mesh, okay? Uh, the metal one is not so bad, especially if it's just a base material because um, the metal just kind of, you know, looks like that generally speaking, but obviously you might want to have some higher quality textures on your mesh. Uh, in that case, we need to UV unwrap the mesh so that um, Unreal Engine or in any other engine that you're going to be using uh, knows exactly how to wrap a two-dimensional texture onto a three-dimensional mesh, okay? So um, we're in edit mode. We're just going to hit A and we're going to see that our mesh has been uh, already kind of pre-wrapped. Uh, or pre-unwrapped uh, because I started with the default cube, okay? So whenever you start with the default primitive shapes in Blender, it's gonna be automatically UV unwrapped for you. Uh, once it starts getting a bit more complicated, uh, you need to start adding seams to tell Unreal Engine how to basically um, split this up. Okay, so um, you can do that just by selecting an edge in edge mode here. Okay, we'll select this edge all the way up. Okay, and then we will cut here, 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 and then the same thing down here. We'll just cut around the three here. We're just selecting all the lines. Uh, just think of this like a pair of scissors uh, that you're gonna be cutting the mesh and we want the mesh to basically lay flat, okay? Once we've selected those lines, we're gonna right click and go mark seam. And uh, we're gonna hit uh, we're gonna hit uh, A to select everything again. We're gonna hit U and we can un, uh, smart, UV un, uh, smart UV project, okay? Um, you can add some island margins in here, like 0.05 is pretty good, just to keep it like slightly separated. Uh, if you want the textures to be seamless, you're not gonna put any island margins in there. Okay, we're gonna hit unwrap, and you can see it's unwrapped every single face or basically collection here into its own mesh here, or into its own uh, area on this UV map. Okay, so if you get a metal texture, uh, this'll probably look pretty good, uh, to be honest. Okay, so uh, you are gonna have to play around with the UV unwrapping just to get something that you like. Um, you can also come up to options and live UV unwrap. So every time you add a seam, it's going to automatically unwrap it for you. Okay. Uh, one thing you can do uh, inside shading. We're just going to go in there right now and I'm just going to show you guys something super quick. Um, so <clears throat> let's make a new material, uh, not a material slot, pardon me. Uh, just actually, let's go to material right here. Okay. So uh, you can uh, uh, go shift A and search and we're going to add an image texture. We can create an image. Um, so we'll do new. We'll just call this color grid. And uh, we're gonna generate a color grid and hit new image. And then we're gonna plug that into base color. Okay, so you can see that this has now um, put a color grid, which uh, looks just like this uh, over your mesh. Okay, so if we go back to our UV editing, you can see that um, when we go to material preview, there we go. Uh, so this is now unwrapped our mesh. And if we select all, we can see exactly where all of the faces are gonna be lined up on this color grid. Uh, this is really handy um, just to make sure that everything, like all the letters are, you know, straight and facing the same way. Uh, for example, just uh, in face mode here, select the these guys. You know, now we select these guys here and we rotate. You can see that it's changing it, right? So if it's off center like that, then we're gonna see right away and it's gonna make our mesh look a little weird. So uh, yeah, this color grid's a really handy tool just to kind of check your work here and make sure things all good. Okay, uh, but what we did do there, unfortunately, if we go back to um, our layout mode here is we did change that material. So we're gonna change this material back to the metal material, okay? Um, all right, so that's uh, UV unwrapping. 
Um, the fourth thing is we need to make sure that our transforms are set. Okay, so right now you can see that yellow dot in the middle here. That means that is the pivot point for this mesh, which means if you spawn it into the Unreal Engine, it's going to, um, when it snaps it to the floor, it's going to put it half in the floor and half not. Okay, so uh, we obviously want to make that not happen. So we're going to be in object mode here. Uh, we're going to select this lamp and we're going to push G. And if this is supposed to be a hanging lamp or a, ma a lamp that you uh, put on a wall or something like that, uh, that's up to you. Um, I'm gonna just move this up to be here. Okay, so it's right on the bottom there of that uh, world origin. Okay, and then once you've done that, you need to hit Control A and it says apply and you can do location, rotation, scale, or all transforms. So I'm gonna hit all transforms. Now the scale and everything has been set. Okay, so you can see that yellow dot has been moved down to the bottom there. Okay, so uh, lastly, um, all of these um, are triangles. If I go to edit mode, all of these are triangles. Okay, or pardon me, all of these are um, squares. We need them to be triangles. That is how our GPUs render objects is with triangles. Okay, so if it's a square and you input this or import this into Unreal Engine without triangulating any faces, Unreal Engine's going to try to triangulate the faces on its own, and uh, it usually will have a different kind of mathematical way of doing it uh, outside of Blender, and on Unity will be the same, and any of the other 3D softwares will be the same. They'll try to triangulate the faces with their own way, um, and it's not always right. So um, a good example is uh, I made a door, um, a doorway uh, mesh, and then I put it in Unreal, and all the, um, basically the top of the door looks super wrong, like it looked like wrong shading, all that kind of stuff, and that's because I didn't triangulate the mesh, and I didn't actually do proper topology, so uh, just check your topology and make sure that everything's triangulated, so how do you do that? Two ways to do it, you can either do it with a modifier here, so you can um, go into object mode, go to the modifiers tab, and then we can uh, generate triangulate, and then uh, shortest diagonal, beauty, number of vertices, four is good because that just means any square is going to turn into a triangle. Okay, and then you can hit apply. Uh, the other way you can do it um, is I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to hit apply just so I can show you guys that it worked. So now we look here and now everything is a triangle. Okay, it's triangulated all of these faces. So now everything in here is a triangle. And now Unreal Engine knows exactly how to render this object because everything is a triangle. Okay. Uh, and then everything should look how it does inside Blender here, okay? All right, now to get this out of Blender and into Unreal Engine, uh, we will select this object. Uh, we will go to um, export, file export, FPX file. Okay, we're gonna be in downloads and we're gonna call this lamp, okay? Uh, in the export settings, we want to make sure that we have mesh only because none of these stuffs, none of these things are in there. Uh, we want to make sure that selected objects is turned uh, on. Okay, scaling and all that apply scaling is all local. That's all fine because we applied our transforms already. Uh, forward, we want X forward because in Unreal X is forward and up is Z up. Okay. Um, you can apply your transforms here as well, but just keep in mind that if you have multiple meshes selected, that's going to apply the transforms based on where the where the world origin currently is, okay? Which is the middle of all of those, the, the X, the Y, the Z, all that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, for geometry, for smoothing, we need to make sure this is on face or else you're going to get a warning in Unreal Engine when you import it saying no smoothing data, okay? Um, you can apply the modifiers here and you can triangulate faces here as well, okay? Um... Armature, we can disable anything there because that's any, if you have a skeleton in your mesh, uh, you're going to need to access this, but we don't have anything like that in this uh, mesh. And then we have no animations with this mesh either. So we're going to just disable that. Okay, we're going to export. It is now exported to an FBX. All right, so we're now in Unreal Engine 5.6, and I'm going to open my content drawer and I'm going to drag my lamp in. Okay, um, so all of these by default are usually good. Uh, the only thing you wanna make sure here, um, obviously we don't have no skeletal animations, so we don't have to have anything there Check. We wanna import the static meshes. Uh, do we have fallback? Okay, so we'll import collisions. We don't have collisions, but the fallback collision type, we'll just make a box, okay? The build, everything like that's fine. Skeletal meshes, we don't care about. Animations, we don't care about. Materials, we wanna import the materials, okay? And uh, it'll just say import as material. So it'll import them and create a material for us uh, for the ones that are included in that FBX file. Okay, uh, textures, same thing, import textures if there's any. And that should be it. We're gonna hit import. There's our materials, here's our lamp. Okay, we're gonna open the lamp up. There's our lamp, there's all our materials and our lamp looks Pretty goddamn good, if I do say so myself. So, um, 
see now I gotta acclimatize myself to uh, Unreal Engine's controls now, camera controls, because it's different in Blender and Unreal Engine, which is kind of frustrating to be honest. I wish you could just have a setting that's like Unreal Engine controls, but anyways. Uh, here's our material slots. Okay, we have our metal, our bronze, our light. Okay, and um, the collision I was talking about, if we come over here and go show simple collision, you can see that Unreal Engine added this green box collision so that uh, we can't go right through it, okay? If you didn't check that one box, that's totally fine. You just come up to collision and add box simplified collision, and then it's gonna add a box around the entire mesh, okay? Um, you don't want to have complex collision on something like this because you don't need it. You, like literally, you're only tracing for four separate sides, pardon me, six separate sides of collision on this instead of like, uh, you know, whatever, however many poly count was in that uh, mesh there, so. Okay, uh, we're gonna, we'll just hit save on there. We're gonna close that and let's put it into the world. Here's our lamp and you can see if I zoom in on it, whoops, hit F. Okay, if I zoom in on it, you can see that it put it on the floor exactly where our pivot point was. Okay, so just to show you that that works. Um, I'm gonna move this up in the air. Where is the lighting? Lighting, directional lights, wherever that is, there it is. Let's rotate you so that it's nighttime. There we go, okay. It's nighttime now and we're gonna turn this on and there's our lamp. You see our lamps giving off light because we put that uh, emissive value on there, okay? Um, and uh, if you wanted to just fool around with the materials as well, you can, uh, we'll open our content drawer and we can go into any of the materials. So let's go into that light material. And you can see that it's already plugged everything in for us, okay? But you can edit stuff in here if you get a normal map eventually or ambient occlusion map or anything like that. If you produce those, you can plug those in here. Um, but yeah, Unreal Engine's done a really good job of being able to uh, import uh, external static meshes here. Okay, so that, uh, yeah, there you go, that's it. All right, I hope those five things really helped you uh, see some of the common errors that happen when you're sending a mesh from Blender over into Unreal Engine 5. Uh, and hopefully that those uh, really explain that well. If you guys have any questions at all, definitely hit me up in the comments below. I reply to pretty much every comment uh, that I get. And uh, if you're looking for even further help with the video or anything in general, consider joining my Discord. There's lots of great people on there uh, working on RPGs, working on first person shooters, working on all sorts of stuff. So there's lots of different brains in there that can help you solve some problems or uh, maybe come up with an idea or maybe even come up with ideas for stuff in your game. Special thanks to my coffee members. You do want to become a coffee member. Uh, you get access to videos early, access to my personal vault of assets, which have lots of uh, 3D meshes like the ones you saw in the video there. And you get a couple of other great perks, so check it out there. Uh, if you want to keep learning Unreal Engine 5, I've got a video right here that'll interest you, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.